Time now to review Wednesday's market activities with Eddie Diong Iwan. Good morning, Eddie Diong. Good morning, BC. Well, the market continued its upward trend for the third consecutive trading session yesterday, and that was on the back of increases in the share price of MTN Nigeria. So that drove the index up by 0.62% to 22,868.40 points and 11.917 trillion naira. Now, volume of deals traded yesterday were higher compared to Tuesday's session as 277.42 million shares were traded. However, value was lower by 7.44% at 2.54 billion naira. And all of that was exchanged in 4,464 deals. Market breadth was positive as 14 stocks gained while 12 tickets declined. Now, only the insurance sector was negative yesterday, and that was due to losses from Lasaco and Cornerstone. Gains from Access Bank, GT Bank, UBA, and FBN Holdings pushed the banking index up by 0.22%. Gains from Vitaform yesterday and international breweries also lifted the consumer goods counter by 0.40%. Investors took advantage of the lower share price of Lafarge Africa yesterday and positioned themselves. So that eventually lifted the industrial goods segment up by 0.26%, while oil and gas counter closed positive yesterday. We saw gains from Ardova by 9.95%, although Etana oil lost yesterday, but that wasn't enough to affect the market. But let's bring in Phil Anegbe, a research analyst at Cardinal Stone. Okay, I think Phil is not ready now, but let's just move on to the unlisted securities market. Now, that segment of the market was unchanged yesterday. We saw the NSI at 694.88 points and market cap at 510.44 billion naira. Volume was at 172,124 units, valued at 48.81 billion naira, and all of that was traded in five deals yesterday. Now, the fixed income market, the bond market closed on a positive note as average yields declined by two basis points to 6.10% from 6.2%. Buying interest was seen across board, you know, the short tenor bonds, with average yields declining by three basis points. However, yields on the mid and long tenor bonds increased. As you can see, there was a lot of activity where we saw more, you know, demand on the 16th of April 2049. You know, we see all of that. 3.30 billion naira on the March 2036. In all, we saw 21 deals worth 8.39 billion naira. So I think Phil is ready for us now. Good morning, Phil. Thank you for joining us on the program. Yeah, good morning. So there was some, re we've seen some renewed interest in the market recently and, you know, today being the last trading day and investors wanting to rebalance their portfolios to meet some obligations, are we likely to see the same interest in the market today? Yeah, for the market today, you expect um, uh, reactions uh, to three key developments. Uh, one is the approval of the $3.4 billion uh, facility by the IMF. Uh, the second one is the uh, announcement that uh, uh, some states will be gradually reopened after a period of restriction. And uh, thirdly, uh, there could be a chance to uh, corporate earnings releases. Uh, on the uh, corporate earnings releases front, we did see uh, reactions to uh, MTN numbers. I think on the top line front, uh, we saw a uh, strong growth across uh, data and uh, voice revenue. And uh, markets could look to see uh, guidance management we give when they have their conference call uh, today uh, to uh, give, provide some sort of insight as to how they are adjusting to the uh, current uh, reality. And uh, you could see uh, a bit uh, more positioning for a dividend qualification date, so big dividend uh, qualification date. We did see some rally in uh, WAPCO yesterday. That could be uh, exhibited in today's uh, trading at states like the last day to qualify for dividend. Uh, so by and large, you expect uh, reactions on those fronts, uh, as well as maybe uh, a few uh, profits uh, taken here and there. So bargain hunting opportunities uh, to subsist uh, today. Okay, so very quickly, do you think the market will benefit from the IMF loan? What the IMF uh, facility uh, does basically is to increase uh, prospect 
for increased FX uh, liquidity and uh, uh, proceed or give some sort of uh, insight as to say, okay, maybe uh, pressures on reserves will be a bit subdued at least for about, say, two months. So that is a uh, welcome development, particularly for uh, those who fear uh, illiquidity in the FX market. Are you asking? The uh, realization that the CBN is beginning to resume its uh, FX sales to uh, different markets. It did announce that it's resuming its sales uh, for SM sales to SMEs and um, uh, for the purpose of paying school fees. I expect that as uh, travel uh, travels resume globally, it will resume its sales to the BDC segment. And that would support uh, BTA and PTA. So those are um, for market development. However, it is important to note that override our sentiment is still bearish uh, because of where oil prices are at the moment. And of course, the uh, twin deficits across Nigeria's key accounts, the current account as well as the fiscal account. So that implies that we see uh, um, sell-offs across some names. However, there are still some stocks that are fundamentally, I would consider fundamentally strong in terms of uh, their prospects for earnings and cash flows uh, going forward, even in this uh, difficult time, uh, which gives them some sort of an ability to better withstand uh, the pressure. So investors need to uh, go long on those kind of names. So those are the kind of developments you expect to happen in this kind of environment. Uh, people more or less queuing up to take advantage of the post-COVID-19 crisis uh, recovery in some so Expect uh, reactions along those lines. Speaking of earnings now, what do you make of the Q1 earnings released by banks so far? Well, uh, the Q1 earnings released by bank has been uh, broadly uh, mixed. Uh, we've seen... Uh, for the last two uh, results that were released, Zenith and the FCMB, we saw strong support uh, coming from revaluation gains. I think it was very important that Zenith revaluation gains more or less kept any uh, flat. And then for FCMB, uh, we see uh, the revaluation gains as well as uh, reduced uh, cost of funds as a result of uh, increased uh, cheap uh, deposits. So that was uh, a major support for FCMB. So across the space, we did see a uh, strong uh, load across the banking space. And uh, that speaks to uh, compliance or desire to comply to CBN's uh, LDR or loan to deposit, loan to funding uh, ratio push that we've seen, uh, we've seen uh, since the uh, latter half of 2019. So those were essentially the development. But really have been mixed. You've seen uh, a couple of decent results. Um, supported by uh, high interest income on uh, lending, as well as um, some here and there, some uh, gains on the non-interest income funds, particularly for those who could push uh, fees and commission. Uh, so the trend now is uh, what we are seeing now, I think to percent of them, you are seeing uh, revaluation gains come to actually support uh, performance following a current adjustment. For the big gradual easing starting on Monday, do you think that will have any impact on investors' appetite in the market? I know you guys have been trading at the NSE, but would that have any impact on investment um, investors' appetite? Well, uh, reactions to uh, earnings have been uh, largely, I would say, average. Uh, for instance, there were a couple of releases yesterday. Uh, there was Surplus, there was um, Venice, there was SMB. Um, there was uh, uh, MTN. Uh, but with these, the clear reactions that we saw, you can be really, really tied to uh, MTN uh, because uh, for FCMB, we didn't see uh, much change uh, in terms of what happened to the price at close of market. Uh, but for MTN, there was reaction. So maybe for a couple of uh, these names, there could be reactions. So you want to say reactions have not been 100% because there are other variables actually uh, affecting market at the moment. Uh, global oil price is one of them. Then the recent positive developments that have more or less spurred 
market, IMF approval of the loan, opening of uh, domestic markets once again, although it's gradual, uh, as well as um, what happens to FX liquidity. So overall, reactions are likely going to be mixed. You have a basket of uh, positive and negative variables. So investors continue to weigh uh, both sets of variables and try to align their interests for uh, uh, to stocks with um, uh, compelling uh, stories, at least in the medium term, uh, given that we are facing uh, significant pressures uh, this year. Phil Anigbe is a research analyst at Cardinal Stone Securities. Thank you for coming on the program. Yeah, thank you. Well, well that's it on the market review. Over to you, BC. Thank you very much, Eddie.